In the last tutorial, I, I talked about the problem of universals. There was this distinction between universals, universal things like man in general or table in general, which was something different from specific individuals, specific men, like Jan, Peter, Steve, and there was something like a general or universal table uh, in contrast with specific instantiations of tables like the table in my room, the table at my university, the t this table and that table, etc. And the problem kind of was, well, what we see is this stuff, it's the, the concrete specific stuff, the particulars, but these universals, we don't really see them. And yet, knowledge seems to be about the general. So, what is this? And now we will see what Plato's ideas are on universals which we can see in his theory of forms or ideas. And actually, forms or ideas, that's really uh, this stuff. That's really the universals, what we call the universals. Plato just calls it forms or ideas. Personally, I prefer the term ideas because forms, Aristotle, Aristotle, Plato's student, also talks about forms. And it's quite different in Aristotle's theory. He has a different view on what universals are, or what forms are. For it's perhaps more handy to use this. But if you, if, if you use the term forms, in written you can write it with capitals. And we'll see why, if we're talking about Plato and talk about forms, why we use capitals. With Aristotle, philosophers won't use capitals when they talk about forms. But okay. Um, in general, anyway, Universals are forms or ideas, and we'll check out what that really means in Plato. Perhaps a little bit of background. So we're talking about 429, 347 BC, that is 5th century, 4th century BC. This is old stuff, but I guess you all realize that Plato is perhaps the most important philosopher in the history of philosophy. So here it really gets started. So... According to Plato, man, in general, it's the idea of man. He distinguishes it from concrete individuals. And last tutorial, I launched a couple of questions with regard to universal. And the first one was, do universals exist? And there, Plato clearly says that they do exist. They're real. Something like man, something like table, it's real. It's real. They really exist. And therefore, Plato is a realist. He's a realist about universals. So he, he does not just believe that we have this idea of what uh, man looks like. We have this idea about what tables or what a table in general is. No, he means that it really exists independent from our thinking. Even if we're not thinking about man or about table, it is still out there. So he's a realist. People often are confused by the fact that he uses the term ideas to refer to these real universals. I mean, isn't it just ideas in our heads? No, it isn't. It's ideas with a big I, and they exist in reality. And it's very important to realize when talking about Plato. So, Plato is a realist. Universals really exist. Moreover, what are universals? For Plato, they are the essence of thing. The essence. Man is the essence of what it means to be human. And therefore we call Plato an essentialist. Essentialist. He's a realist and he's also an essentialist. Philosophers like to use these words with ism, right? So he's not only a realist, he believes that universals are real, he's also an essentialist. He believes that there is something like really existing essences. Um, okay. And moreover, 
the essence of things refers to, in a sense, a perfect model of that thing. A perfect model. So the essence refers to something perfect. The perfect Im image of man, that is its essence. And I said something in the last tutorial about perfectness and essence. And actually, that kind of comes from Plato. Um, so I'll try, uh, I'll recap what I said there. Our ideal man, Da Vinci's Vitruvian man, he has all his arms and legs in perfect proportions. But Pete, he might, Pete might be bald and Jan's left leg might be a little bit shorter than his right leg and Steve might lack a finger. So these guys are all imperfect, but their essence is in a sense the perfect model for what it means to be human. Okay. So that means that stuff, that material things, and the distinction with Plato is thus one of ideas and material things. Material things. This means that material things are imperfect. Moreover, kind of forgot to say, while ideas are real, material things are less real. They're less real, according to Plato. They're less real. So they are less real and they're imperfect. That is strange to say that Jan, Pete and Steve are in a sense less real than the idea of man in general. We tend to think that it's the other way around, that this stuff, these material things, which we can really observe, that is reality and the idea is that that's somehow a copy. So we, we think that, you know, the idea of man is somehow a copy of, of the people that we, that we really see and meet in reality. But for Plato it's really the, the other way around. So, um, man in general, it's what exists and Pete, Steve and Jan they are copies of the idea. Copies or shadows, so the arrow goes down rather than up, uh, in contrast with, with what you might intuitively think. Okay, so um, Plato is a realist, he's an essentialist, and these essences have something to do with the perfect model for what it means to be something perfect or good. For Plato, these are synonymous. So, the idea of man is, it's perfectly good. And that is kind of a strange theory. These things, they are imperfect and they are less good. Perhaps let's first talk about ideas. Both man, the idea of man, has goodness in it, and the table also has goodness in it. So for Plato, this makes him conclude that there is something similar to ideas, such as man and table, namely their goodness. And he expresses that by saying that both participate at the idea of the good. The idea of the good. So the idea of the good is a kind of super idea. It's a kind of super idea to which specific ideas like the idea of table or the idea of man participate. Scheme is getting a bit difficult here, but I hope you can follow. Okay. So goodness is present both in men as well as in tables. And it's less present in material things. And for, for Plato, being real and being good is kind of the same thing. So ideas, they are more real and they are more good. Because reality is being, in a sense, good. It's being perfect. It's being 
a good man. And a good man, that means to have all these essential characteristics of a man fully exhibited. Um, and for philosophers, this is not necessarily like having lots of muscles and being very beautiful. It might also be that, but it's definitely also thinking. Being able to think uh, rationally, this is, this is the essence. And, you know, so this guy is perfectly wise, but perhaps Jan is not so wise and Pete also not. So, and in as far as they are less wise, they are less, they lack being they lack goodness and they lack being so it's a kind of a strange theory reality is equal to goodness okay and for th for tables the same these tables are a little bit imperfect you know they're not fully stable because one leg is a little bit shorter than the other um, or the surface is not fully straight right and the bottle might drop they're all imperfect and in that sense they are a little bit less table. They are less table than the idea of table, the perfect idea. So this, this is full being, full reality. This is a little bit less real. Okay. So, um, and then another typically platonic idea is to say that um, the ideas and the material things they exist in a different world, in separate worlds. So I have to draw a line here. There is the world of ideas and there is the world of material things, ideas or forms. So the world or, or the realm of ideas or forms and the world or the realm of material things. Philosophers use these terms, world or realm. Um, okay, so, so, so there's a, a borderline here. And, and this idea that there are two worlds is often called dualism in philosophy. So, dualism, so we have another ism here. Um, apparently Plato is not only a realist and an essentialist, but he's also a dualist. He believes that there are two worlds and ideas or universals exist in a second world, not just in this concrete, specific material world in which we live and which we see every day, but in a, in a kind of, in another world. And that's a little bit of a mystical idea. Um, I mean, it seems to be a higher world, that's for sure. But it's not clear where this world is at, right? It, it looks a little bit like a kind of heaven, a kind of spiritual realm where immaterial ideas, spiritual entities exist. And so it seems to be higher, and in that sense we can call these ideas transcendent. They are transcendent. They transcend the world of material things. Transcend. Let me see if I have place to write that down here. Transcendent. Transcend just means to um, to be higher, to go higher, to lift up, to be lifted up higher. Okay. So Plato is a dualist. And then perhaps one last thing to launch yet another ism, but my time is definitely up here. Um, remember that there were different questions about universals. So one, do they exist? And Plato said, yes, they exist. Then second, where do they exist? And Plato apparently believes that they, that they exist in this transcendent world of ideas. And there was a third question, namely, how can we acquire knowledge of ideas? And there Plato says, we have to use our reason. We have to reason our way up to these ideas. We have to use reason rather than the senses. Because the senses, with the senses we, we see the material things in this specific material world and knowledge is not about that material stuff, right? Remember about the last tutorial? I mean, this stuff is all imperfect, it's all changing, um, so we can't re rely on the senses. We must rely on our reason to try to make the bridge to these eternal ideas. 
But how that really works will be a topic for the next tutorial.